Hey everyone, I'm Adam Kelly. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can automatically swap out different backgrounds in Blender so that you can render an object on top of photos. Now, my application for this is for 3D rendered synthetic data sets, and it's kind of a follow up to the course that we just launched 3D rendered data sets with Blender for beginners. The idea is that you can actually train artificial intelligence to spot objects and images completely with 3D rendered scenes in Blender. But one of the limitations is if you only render it on top of a plain background like this, then it might not do so well when you take it out into the real world. And there's a lot more in the background, whether it's plants or different textures in your world. It'd be great if we could train it with lots of different textures. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, what I have is a very simple scene and a 3D model that I created of a pen. And this is it rendered out. And you can see it's on a white background. Well, this white background isn't very interesting. So we're going to swap this out for something that is a photo. And I've collected a few different photos, a few pictures of different surfaces in my house, and one photo from my honeymoon a few years ago. And I'll show you how you can render out this same object in front of those different backgrounds. So the first thing I'm going to do is just delete this right here. So I'll hit X and delete that. And now all we have left is a camera and a light in our scene. So what we want to do is create a flat plane that the camera sees behind this object that has that texture on it. It's pretty simple to do. So the first thing we'll do is add a mesh plane. And it's going to be just have a default material on it. So what we want to do is swap out the material. And it's better if you're in material mode when you're doing this. So go ahead and click here on the material properties and click new. And we're going to call this background with a capital B. And I want you to match my name because the script that we're going to use to automatically swap out backgrounds is going to reference this by name. So it needs to match. Now, we don't really want a principled BSDF because we don't want this material to reflect light or to have any of the actual physical properties. We want this to just look like an image exactly as it would be shown like this. So this already has its own light and we don't want the light in the scene to affect it. So if you click on the surface right here, you can change this out for emission. And right now we have an emissive plane. That means it's going to generate its own light. And we want to pass in a texture instead of a color here. So switch into the shading workspace. And the shading workspace is going to allow us to play with the nodes of this material. So we have the, our emission node right here. And all we need to do is pass in an image to this right here. So go to add texture, image texture. And then we want to open and you can pick any image that you have. It really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go into my backgrounds folder where I've already gathered a number of different JPEG images here. And I'm just going to pick one. And it doesn't really matter, I say, because we're going to swap these out automatically in code. This first one won't actually be used. So now I pass this output into this input. And as you can see, it now has this texture on it. Now, of course, the problem you can see right away is that from the camera's point of view, it's going to be seeing this at an angle, which isn't really desirable in this case. Maybe it is in some case, but we're going to find a, a better way to do that so that we can just show this on top of a picture. So go ahead and switch back into your layout mode. And we're going to rotate this basically so that it's always in front of the camera. And a little trick to do that is make sure that you've got this plane selected. And then we're going to go into the Object Constraint Properties tab and add a Child of Constraint. And then if you click this and find your camera, now it's going to be a child of this camera. And all you need to do is change the Z value to some negative value. 
And now, as you can see, it is in front of the camera. And if I hit the zero key on my number pad, you can get a better idea of maybe how far away you want this to be. Maybe something like that. I'm just trying to make sure that there's no empty spaces, but that the camera sees a decent amount of this material. So now if I render this out, you'll see that it is the same object, but with a photo behind it. So that's the idea here. We want to render out a bunch of these with a bunch of different backgrounds. And ideally, you'd want this to rotate as well. You'd want the camera to see it from different angles, maybe the lighting to change somewhat. And that's all stuff that we teach in the course, in the 3D rendered data sets with Blender course. So if you're interested in learning more about how to set all of that, up, definitely check out the course. But for now, we're going to go into the scripting workspace and we're going to add a script. And to add a script, go to this new button here and click it. This will create a new text document, but in Blender, text documents can be run as Python. So I'm going to paste in a script that I've already written so that you don't have to watch me type this out. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to automatically render out a bunch of different images with backgrounds. And I want to point out if yours doesn't look quite like this, make sure that you switch from this mode to this mode so that you can see it if, if that's important to you. Now this right here is a directory. I'm not going to explain everything that's in this script, but I'll give you the basics. So we're passing in a directory uh, that has backgrounds in it. So for me, that's this background directory. So I only have five in here, or no, oh, I have six in here. So I would recommend that you start with a very small number of backgrounds just to make sure that it works before you scale this up. And then I have an output path. And you don't need to make sure this directory exists. Just make sure that you have you know, permissions to output files to this directory and that you know where it's going to go. So update these paths to places where uh, you have files that you want them to be. Now, we have an index and we have a loop. So this loop is going through all of the files in the directory. And this directory, for me, only contains JPEG images. So if you have other stuff in here, I don't know, MP3 files or videos or something like this, this line will probably fail because it's just trying to load an image at that path. So make sure that your, your folder is clean and only has images in it before you uh, run this code or you do some additional checking. So it loads the image and then it's going to put it into this material. So basically it's going to swap out what's in this node, which is called image texture. And the material, if you recall correctly, is called background. So that's why we're calling this bpy.data.materials background. This name matches the name of the material exactly. And then we're getting the image texture node and we're setting its image to this new image that we just loaded. Then we just set the file path to a number, basically this index with some number of zeros in front of it. And then we render it out with script. So this code right here just tells it to render and it'll render to a file. And so that's all this script does, nothing more advanced than that. Now, before we run this, I recommend that you go to your uh, window toggle system console right here. This is going to allow you to see the output from your, from your render as it's going because this is going to freeze up as soon as you hit play, because it's gonna to try to render these out. And I am rendering this out with cycles, so it's gonna take a little bit longer than if it were in EV mode, for example. And I always recommend that you save your file, because in the event that you run this and you accidentally did it on a folder that had like a thousand images, you would have to render out a thousand images before you got your Blender UI uh, back and responsive again. So go ahead and press play when you have this script ready, and you'll be able to see in your output 
console, basically, it's starting to render out these images. And mine is being rendered to the auto background folder as this image. I'm rendering out PNG images. So if I go to my temp directory and auto background, you're going to start seeing these outputs. And as I mentioned, these are all of the same exact rotation and lighting and all that. So it'd be useful if it could uh, see it from different angles, maybe shift it around a little bit. But this is the basics of how you can set up a script to automatically swap out all your backgrounds. So that's it for this video. Of course, we would appreciate it so much if you'd check out the course, and we'll make sure to post a link to that in the video description. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and let us know what you thought.